All right, folks, we're going to talk about uh, biomass properties. Uh, how do we analyze biomass today? Uh, you, know, you know, there are a number of ways uh, that we could use uh, to characterize biomass uh, within uh, those uh, different types of analysis. Proximate analysis uh, is one way to characterize biomass, and, and today we'll be talking about uh, what that is and how it is being done. So the at the end of this session, you should be able to uh, describe the methods uh, that we use and to analyze uh, biomass using proximate uh, analysis of the methods. So within the proximate analysis, we have uh, four different methods that we typically use. Uh, one is a moisture content, uh, depending upon the type of biomass that we we have or we use for the bioenergy uh, production uh, that could vary quite a bit. Uh, uh, for example, you know, if you have a uh, you know green wood uh, woody biomass that's freshly cut, uh, probably have a moisture content about 55 to 60 percentage. If you have harvested agricultural residues, uh, corn stubble, for example, may may have about 15 to 20 percent moisture content. Uh, the other property that we use is ash content. Uh, that also again varies depending on the type of biomass that you want to use it. Uh, typically, woody biomass has a you know what's a smaller uh, percentage, uh, anywhere about half a percentage or percentage on that uh, to maybe 30, 40 percentage if you are talking about uh, municipal sludge or, or a poultry liter. Uh, those types of uh, biomass. The another properties that people talk about it, or, or at least we measure uh, when we uh, characterize biomass, is volatile matter or volatile combustible matter uh, there. And this typically gives you an idea about uh, how much biomass can be volatilized uh, at a given temperature, and, and so uh, so that that gives you. Uh, the temperature range that you need to operate uh, as some of, uh, for some of these processes. And then uh, the finally is the amount of, uh, you know, biomass that would be left, uh, you know, after you remove all the borders, you know, what that percentage would be. And typically people refer this as a fixed carbon. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's all carbon, but, but that's just the way the terminology that we use it. Uh, but basically, that didn't get uh, you know volatilized, but we refer to the fixed carbon. Uh, the amount of carbon that is present in the biomass is measured differently, and we'll talk about that uh, when we uh, discuss about the ultimate analysis. So, in terms of the moisture content uh, analysis, typically uh, you take uh, the sample that you are interested, in, whether it could be in the powder form or the you know or the sawdust or the wood chips. Uh, you, you take the initial weight of the sample, uh, then you record that, uh, put it in a, uh, in a drying oven, uh, or maybe uh, uh, something like this, uh, the moisture analyzer uh, for, for the quick analysis, uh, you could use that uh, there. Uh, this type of uh, instrument, this is a quick, uh, you know, a small infrared uh, moisture analyzer, are not suitable for the wood chips. So if you're going to use it for the wood chips, uh, you may want it to use uh, something uh, uh, like a drying oven, for example. And you take the sample, put it there uh, anywhere from 16 to 24 hours. You take out the sample, put it in the dish to get a little cool until it is time uh, for you to uh, get the weight. And, and so once you measure that, the final weight of the sample, once it is uh, subjected to the, uh, the temperature, the drying temperature, and you could use this particular equation to measure the moisture content. So the, it's a fairly simple formula. You have the initial mass of a uh, you know, biomass sample that you use it minus the final sample. That gives you the amount of uh, you know, mass that you, you lose divided by the initial mass. And so if you multiply that one, that gives you the moisture percentage. And typically, if you use this particular equation, we refer that as a moisture content on a weight basis. Because the 
this m sub i that you're using is a weight biomass and and so if you were to use that uh, m sub f instead of m sub i that would be uh, the dry uh, basis the next uh, property is the volatile matter or the volatile combustible matter uh, in this case uh, you take a biomass sample usually in this case we talk about uh, we take a dry sample uh, that is you know already dried you know you don't have uh, any moisture content and so you take the sample put it in a uh, you know a furnace uh, that is set at uh, anywhere from 950 uh, plus minus 20 degrees centigrade uh, you you typically have a sample in a crucible uh, you cap that one usually you, you don't put a, a tight cap but you just cover it uh, so that the air doesn't get into the sample but whenever you have the uh, volatiles that are being produced when it is subject to that high temperature you just have enough uh, room to skip uh, from the uh, from the sample holder and then you you wait it uh, for seven minutes and then take it out let it cool uh, and then use this particular equation uh, to measure the uh, volatile combustible matter again volatile matter this is the uh, initial mass of the sample that you put in and uh, once you check out it you know that's the final mass and so the difference would be the amount of you know volatile matter that you must have lost divided by the initial mass so usually this is a dry biomass there and so keep in mind that uh, typically when you talk about the volatile matter uh, or ash or fixed carbon we tend to represent on the dry basis and so it is would be fair comparison uh, with other studies or maybe other samples um, there so the moisture content is not a factor there and so so this is you what you get uh, the, uh, uh, from this equation the volatile matter typically gives just to give you an idea uh, biomass uh, you know some of the biomass that we use would have anywhere from you know 75 80 85 percent so fairly high uh, volatile matter as compared to coal for example which would be around a 40 45 percentage or so okay and after the third property that uh, we would measure uh, is ash uh, we leave samples uh, in a muffler furnace, uh, either around 600 uh, degrees C or, uh, or even 575 would also work. Uh, you take a sample, uh, usually dry samples, uh, you put it in a muffler furnace. You could probably burn all the samples, you know, if you have a small amount of samples within an hour or so. I usually leave it for uh, four hours again you know you have to make sure that after four hours if you feel like you have some samples that did not burn uh, fairly well uh, then you may want it to uh, to maybe give an extra an hour or so to, to so that uh, you have all the you know, all the samples are burned and, and converted into ash so once you do that one uh, and you could uh, basically use this particular equation to measure the uh, ash content of a sample. So W sub F is the final constant weight of a crucible after cooling. Uh, and, and that should have, a, that weight should include the weight of crucible and the residue, whatever that left after burning all the samples. And then minus uh, weight of crucible, uh, W uh, sub C, and then they divided that with the uh, initial uh, mass that you know you basically use it uh, uh, you know, before putting into volatile matter. So once you have that one, uh, then you could uh, calculate the uh, ash percentage. So so this is again on, on a weight basis. Uh, you could take the uh, same sample that you use uh, for the measurement uh, for the volatile matter, and after you measure the volatile matter, is same residue that was left you could take that one and then put it in the muffle furnace and burn it or you take a fresh new sample uh, and use that one so make sure that uh, you, you uh, if you new if you use a new fresh sample uh, that should be the uh, you know the weight of these uh, samples that that you use it uh, to measure the ash content so once you measure uh, uh, ash uh, now what you could do is uh, you can calculate the fixed carbon fixed carbon is typically calculated by difference so 
is the equation that you would use to calculate the fixed carbon. 100 minus volatile matter or the volatile combustible matter minus ash would give you the fixed carbon. Again, this would be on a dry basis as well, okay? And so, uh, so again, just to recap very quickly, we, uh, we saw within the approximate analysis of biomass, uh, we use uh, four different properties to measure uh, the, prop, you know, the quality of the biomass and the properties of the biomass, moisture content, uh, you know, volatile combustible matter, ash, uh, and the fixed carbon. And, and so, uh, so hopefully, you know, this video will give you an idea about how uh, the proximate analysis of the biomass is done.